This video has been a long time coming and not in the sense that it took me ages to make, but simply because for months now I've been seeing a lot of posts and comments online that have really made me think, I need to say something about this. I need to, I need to make a video about it. Um, but frankly, it's got to the point now where I'm just fed up of seeing them. So here I am this morning. I just said to myself, today's the day I'm going to sit down and boil down the truth about speed boosters. Cinematography is of course art and that is subjective, but when it comes to the tools and technology we use, most of that is objective. It's just maths and physics. A speed booster is just that, it's just optics. Um, there's nothing magical going on about it and too many people uh, misunderstand what is going on inside them and what they do and how they do it. And I really wanna just break down uh, the truth about it explain how it works, why it does what it does, and bust some myths about it. I apologize if this comes across all as a big rant. Um, I feel very strongly about this simply because it is a case of, you know, facts. It's, it's maths, it's either right or it's wrong. I want people to, to understand what's going on so they can make the most out of their tools and equipment and ultimately make um, more engaging films. So a speed booster is just a focal length reducer. It's a brand name just like Hoover is a brand name for a vacuum cleaner. That's all it is. It's a registered trademark of Metabones. Um, they uh, became very popular a number of years ago with the advent of the Sony FS700 and the FS7. Um, loads of Sony users are familiar with Metabones and speed boosters. Speed boosters are coming up again online because Canon now have the C70. It's the first time that Canon have really entered the professional mirrorless video market. And Canon have released their own focal length reducer. And a lot of people are referring to it as a speed booster. So for the purposes of this video, I will simply refer to focal length reducers as speed boosters, simply because that's what they've become known as colloquially in the industry. Um, but know that I'm referring to any focal length reducer of any brand. Let's take a 50mm lens as our example. This is a Zeiss Contax 50mm f1.4. Um, and something that, to be aware of before we get into it is how, does, uh, how is an f-stop calculated? And that's simply the focal length divided by the entrance pupil diameter. Now the entrance pupil is the width of the opening of the aperture blades uh, as viewed through the lens because the lens of course magnifies or in some cases demagnifies the size of uh, that opening. So in this case, this is an f1.4 lens. So the entrance pupil width is about 35 millimeters. Now that doesn't mean that the blades are 35 millimeters apart when fully retracted, but it means that they, they look like they're 35 millimeters when seen through the front of the lens. A quick rule of thumb is that the front element will always be at least as wide as the entrance pupil. You can see this in action by looking at fast telephoto lenses like this 200mm f1.8 whose entrance pupil is a whopping 111mm. The front of the lens is wider than the rear and by looking at the optical diagram we can see the actual size and position of the aperture. Measuring this section of the lens however it's clear that the aperture must be smaller than the entrance pupil. And yet, if we take a look through the front, it appears that the lens is the same width for its entire length and that the aperture is as wide as the lens itself. It's also no coincidence that the front element is just over 11 centimeters. So let's start by discussing one of the most important aspects of a speed booster. And it's the one thing that's probably the cause of most people's confusion or misunderstanding. When you use a speed booster, the focal length of the lens fundamentally changes. You're literally adding in extra elements to the back of the lens, which changes what that lens is. The other really important thing to remember and bear in mind when we're talking about speed boosters is that a camera's format, whether that's full frame, Super 35, APS-C, Micro Four Thirds, whatever, does not and cannot change a lens. When you add a speed booster to a lens, what you're doing is changing that focal length you're making the lens wider. So every speed boost will have a magnification factor. Most of them are about 0.71 times. Uh, and this simply means you multiply that focal length by that magnification factor. 
So 50 times 0.71 is 35.5. We'll call it 35 for the sake of simplicity. So the lens is now a 35 millimeters. Not, not like, it is a 35 millimeter lens. And that's really important to understand. You've added in some optical elements to the back that's made that lens wider, made the focal length shorter. But crucially, that entrance pupil diameter hasn't changed. The apertures will still open up as far as they do. So now we've got a 35 millimeter lens with a 35 millimeter entrance pupil diameter. 35 divided by 35 is one. So this lens, a 50 millimeter f1.4 with a speed booster is now a 35 millimeter f1.0. So here's the setup just to demonstrate. We've got the Canon 24 to 70 Mark II on the C70 and we're set to 50 millimeters. We're on the speed booster. Now you'll notice on the camera, it says it's 36 millimeters f2. Now the camera isn't lying. Uh, any lens with electronic contacts will pass through the metadata such as focal length and aperture to the camera. And the camera can calculate the actual focal length and aperture uh, when using the speed booster. In a nutshell, that is how a speed booster works. That's how it gets a wider field of view and how it gets a faster aperture. Super 35 cameras have a crop factor of about 1.5 times when compared to full frame. Now, it varies camera to camera, manufacturer to manufacturer, and let's not get too hung up on crop factors because that's a whole other video and a whole other rant that I could get into. And um, we'll save that for another day. But what this means that that 1.5 times crop is essentially negated by that times 0.71 magnification of the speed booster. 1.5 times 0.71 is 1.065, which is pretty much, you know, almost exactly your 1.0 times full frame crop. When you use a 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera, you get a certain field of view. When you use a 50 millimeter lens on a Super 35 camera, you'll get a narrow field of view because of that crop factor. But when you use that same 50 millimeter lens with a speed booster, it becomes a 35 millimeter lens, which is how on Super 35, you get that wider field of view again. A 35 millimeter lens on Super 35 will give the same or an equivalent field of view as 50 millimeter lens on a full frame camera. This is the field of view we get on Super 35 with a 50 millimeter lens. Here's the same lens again, but with the addition of a speed booster. Notice how the field of view is significantly wider. And for comparison, here's a full frame camera with the same lens. Here's the two side by side. There is a slight shift in framing just where I've swapped the cameras over, but you can see that the field of view on the C70 is almost exactly the same as on the C500 Mark II. Depth of field is one of those topics that's often confused. And so it's worth reminding ourselves that the only things that affect depth of field are the focal length, the aperture, and the distance to subject. Nothing else changes it. The format size, whether it's full frame, super 35, any of that, does not change depth of field. The image has already been formed as it goes through the lens before it hits the sensor. You can try this yourself. Hold a lens close to a wall and you'll see that it projects a discernible image. It doesn't matter how big the wall is, it hasn't changed the depth of field. Assuming same distance to subject, the only things that can now affect depth of field are our aperture and our focal length. Our speed boosted lens now has a wider field of view, which naturally increases the depth of field. But because our lens is also one stop faster, this reduces the depth of field and the two cancel each other out. A 35 mm f1.0 will have the same depth of field as a 50 mm f1.4, regardless of format. So here's a quick and dirty real world example of just this. I have a 50 mm on the camera, and whilst I don't have a 35 mm f1, I do have a 35 mm f1.4. So I'm gonna compare that to 50 millimeters at f2, and you'll see that the results are the same. So I'm gonna stop down to f2, and notice these out of focus LEDs in the background. See how they're about the same size as our lovely model BB-8's eyeball right here. 
start recording. And now I'm going to swap to a 35 millimeter. And we are wide open. So this is 35 millimeter f1.4. Although the LEDs are now smaller in frame, so is everything else because we've got a wider field of view. They're still the same size as BB-8's eyeball. So if I stop recording and go into Super 35 mode, you can now see that the depth of field is the same between 35 1.4 and 50mm f2. If it helps to understand, think of a speed booster or a focal length reducer as they're probably called. It's the exact opposite of a focal length extender or a doubler or a teleconverter as they're sometimes called. So take the Canon uh, 1.4 or two times teleconverters. They increase the focal length by that magnification at the expense of loss of light. The speed booster is the exact opposite. It decreases the focal length with the added benefit of gaining a stop of light. Let's talk about a couple of other things. Image circle. When using a speed booster, you will reduce the image circle of any given lens. So a lens that's designed for use on a full frame camera, that image projected at the back of the lens may now only cover a Super 35 sensor. If you were to put that same lens with a speed booster back on a full frame camera, you would see what's called portholing. This is hard vignetting where the image circle doesn't cover the sensor. Consider this, there is only a finite amount of light that can pass through a lens, limited by the width of the entrance pupil. There's only a certain number of photons that can hit a sensor. When you expand or reduce the image circle of a lens, there's still only the same number of photons, but either spread out across a larger area or concentrated into the smaller area. This is why when using a speed booster, by compressing that image circle, you're getting a brighter exposure. Each pixel receives a higher density of photons. It's still the same number of total photons, but they're simply packed into a smaller space. A great practical analogy to this is a torch. The LED has a fixed brightness, but by focusing the beam smaller, the torch gets brighter. Here you can see side by side the effect a speed booster has on exposure. So for the avoidance of any doubt, I'm going to give you a quick demonstration to show that nothing is being changed either in camera or in post. Firstly, I'm going to shoot this in Rec. 709 just so that I don't have to do any image processing whatsoever. I don't need to add any LUTs or introduce any opportunity for the exposure or colour to change in any way. The next thing to note is that we're using a fully manual lens and this is so that the camera can't control the aperture electronically. You can see that we're wide open at f1.4. And if I hit record, you can see on the waveform that this clapperboard sits at or just below the 75 mark. If I change the adapter, however, and put on the Canon Speed Booster, we're still wide open on the lens, and yet the waveform reads that 80 or 85. If I stop the lens down by one stop to f2, you can see that the waveform drops to where it was before. With the technical explanation out of the way, let's bust some myths about common misconceptions about speed boosters. When using a full frame lens on a Super 35 camera, the image is darker. By using a speed booster, the exposure is the same as if you were using that lens on a full frame camera. False. Using a lens on any format will yield the same exposure. Using a speed booster will give you a one stop brighter exposure. Having a look at our test setup again, you can see that we get a brighter exposure when using the speed booster. Also notice that without the speed booster, the exposure is the same between the C70 and the C500 Mark II, regardless of whether it's in Super 35 or full frame mode. When using a full frame lens on a Super 35 camera, the crop factor increases the focal length. Using a speed booster reduces that focal length back to its original full frame focal length. False. A lens's focal length does not change regardless of what format it is used on. A 50mm lens will always be a 50mm lens, 
whether it's on full frame, Super 35, Micro Four Thirds, any format. A crop factor is just a tool to compare relative sizes of formats. It doesn't change the lens. The depth of field gets thinner when using a speed booster. False. Whilst the aperture does get faster and in itself would bring a shallower depth of field, the lens also gets wider by the same factor, offsetting any change in the depth of field. Assuming the distance to subject remains the same, the depth of field will be the same when using a speed booster. However, if you move closer to subject to offset the wider field of view, then the depth of field will get thinner, but this is a result of distance to subject and not the speed booster. When using a speed booster, the depth of field gets deeper. Comparing the same lens on full frame and speed boosted on Super 35, if you have both lenses wide open, they'll have the same depth of field, but the speed boosted lens will be one stop brighter. When using the lens wide open on both of the cameras, the entrance pupil width is the same. By stopping down on the speed boosted lens one stop, you're closing down the aperture blades, which results in a deeper depth of field, even though both lenses are now at the same exposure. Using a speed booster improves the quality of a lens. Sort of. By widening the field of view, you're making use of the full image circle of the lens thereby shrinking any inherent flaws the lens may have. A lens may appear sharper or have less aberrations, but only because we're not looking through a smaller portion of the lens so closely. Equally, consider that a lens doesn't perform as well towards the outer edges of its image circle compared to the centre. You might start to see vignetting that you hadn't done before. Finally, a speed booster has optics of its own, which no matter how well it's made, will introduce its own optical flaws. This probably negates any optical improvement it may offer. A speed boosted lens on Super 35 therefore isn't necessarily any better or worse, but any imperfections may be slightly different. Using a speed booster is better for low light shooting. Maybe. There's no question that a speed booster will give you a brighter exposure by one stop, and this, compared to the same camera and lens without a speed booster, will be better in low light. But comparing a speed boosted camera to a full frame camera might not be so clear cut. The image will be brighter, However, full frame cameras typically have better low light uh, performance than Super 35 cameras. You would need to do some side-by-side -side testing to determine which really is better in low light. I can speed boost Super 35 lenses. Technically, yes, but you can't really use them on a Super 35 camera. Remember that using a speed booster reduces the image circle. So yeah, you could speed boost a Super 35 lens, but then the resulting image circle will be smaller than Super 35. So if you try to use it on a Super 35 camera, you will get portholing. Metabones, for instance, make a number of different speed boosters for different formats. Some are designed for Super 35 lenses speed boosting onto Micro Four Thirds cameras. Some are designed for full frame lenses onto Micro Four Thirds cameras. Using a speed booster turns my camera into full frame. No, you cannot change the size of your sensor, regardless of what lens or speed booster you put on it. The sensor is a fixed size. Using a speed booster gives you a wider field of view when using the same lens and sensor. That's enough ranting from me for now. Thank you so much for making it this far if you've listened to me waffle on. Uh, I sincerely hope that that has cleared up any confusions or misunderstandings you might have had about speed boosters. Thanks.